Welcome folks. Uh, this is the fifth lecture in chapter two and we will still continue with the breakdown in gaseous dielectrics. We learnt about the performance of air as well as SF6 gas in weakly non-uniform field which is more important from the practical point of view. We also learnt the typical value of eta limit, the Schweiger factor eta limit, the degree of non-uniformity eta limit which distinguishes between the weakly non-uniform and the extremely non-uniform fields. We know that in weakly non-uniform fields no partial breakdown takes place whereas in extremely non-uniform fields partial breakdown would always precede the total breakdown, the complete breakdown or global breakdown. The value of eta limit is measured uh, we also showed it in, in characteristic measured characteristic of eta limit wherein you have to in, in the practical measurement you have to two or you have to perform two types of measurements one the pb inception voltage and second the breakdown voltage so, so both these things are simultaneously measured and we could establish when eta limit is uh, when the value of eta is greater than eta limit it is weakly non-uniform field and when the value of eta is less than eta limit it is extremely non-uniform field but very interesting phenomenon is that the value of eta limit is pressure dependent that means if you uh, change the pressure of the gas, the value of eta limit changes. Uh, the experiment, what we learned in the previous uh, lecture, we performed in atmospheric air. That means when there is only uh, um, pressure is equal to one atmosphere. The air as a dielectric is used very widely at atmospheric pressure, but the other gaseous dielectrics, for example, SF6 gas and its mixtures, what we learn, are always uh, applied or in the apparatus, they always work at higher pressures. As the pressure maintained in uh, uh, SF6 gas installation could be anything between 3 to 4 uh, atmospheric. So we uh, have to learn how does eta limit changes with increase in gaseous pressure. The definition of eta limit is that when the eta, uh, eta value is greater than eta limit it is weakly non-uniform and when eta value is less than or uh, lesser than eta limit it is extremely non-uniform in what quality what uh, characteristic distinguishes the two fields as we just now men mentioned that in weakly non-uniform fields no pb takes place because as soon as the pb takes place it uh, achieves the breakdown, complete breakdown. Whereas in extremely non-uniform fields, a breakdown would always be preceded by partial breakdown. So you see a graph here uh, uh, where eta value has been calculated uh, and eta limit value is also determined, as I said, should be with the help of simultaneous measurement of partial breakdown uh, and breakdown. In this case, maybe the, the 
value of uh, breakdown is not needed. The measurement of PB inception would determine the value of uh, uh, eta under different pressure with varying eta uh, for uh, for varying pressure. Uh, uh, as you see the graph here, it is pressure dependency of uniform uh, field uniformity factor that is try to factor eta limit. Experimental investigations have revealed that in compressed gas insulated extremely non-uniform field electrode arrangements, the inception of PB not only depends upon the electrode geometry and the gap distance, but it is also strongly affected by the gas pressure. In the region eta uh, greater than eta limit, as I mentioned, no PB uh, takes place. Eta greater than eta limit, obviously in, the, in this region, uh, in this region, no uh, PB occur uh, and the field is weakly non-uniform. Whereas when the uh, eta value is less than uh, eta limit, in this case, the extremely non-uniform field configuration of PB is observed before the breakdown. And this eta limit man, established with this characteristic of partial breakdown uh, occurrence and not occurrence would always be uh, uh, would be dependent upon the gas pressure. As you increase the gas pressure, you as you see, uh, you this is one at uh, the gas pressure is here. This is one atmospheric gas pressure, hmm? and this is something like four atmospheric gas pressure. So the value of eta limit reduces as, as you see in this curve, uh, it reduces and uh, what is the advantage of this? That means when you have higher gas pressure, let's say for atmospheric, the value of eta limit is smaller. What does it imply? The, uh, you can afford to have more non-uniformity in electric field configurations within the apparatus when you are working at higher gas pressure compared to when you are working at low gas pressure. So when you can afford more of non-uniformity, you don't have to give shape to the electrodes very large, you can afford to work uh, with a smaller radius of curvature as we learned the uh, Schweiger as it had uh, described uh, Rp by R, uh, you must have uh, learned that. So with the smaller radius of curvature of the electrodes, you can work upon, that means it leads to smaller size of the equipment. And that is very important if you can work, I mean, achieve the same quality with smaller size of the equipment, it is economical as you know. So, uh, yeah, with this, uh, we will uh, complete, um, we will uh, begin with a new uh, section. Breakdown in extremely non-uniform field and corona. As I mentioned, what is corona? Corona is nothing but the partial breakdown activity in gaseous dielectrics under weekly, which takes place under extremely non-uniform field configurations only. In weekly non-uniform field, no partial breakdown activity, so no corona. So uh, corona, uh, or you can say in extremely non-uniform fields at voltages 
much below the breakdown voltage, a stable partial breakdown. St mind it, stable partial breakdown means so long you apply the voltage, the partial breakdown activity will continue in the gaseous dielectrics and which is confined, the partial breakdown uh, um, activity is confined locally to the region of extremely non-uniform field it is, uh, is maintained, is continued and that is nothing but corona. This phenomenon as in technical language we describe as partial breakdown. <coughs> Earlier people have been uh, uh, talking slightly different way. They have been talking about partial discharge. I would prefer the terminology partial breakdown because actually it is breakdown, local breakdown within the insulation. Discharge as I had mentioned right in the beginning, there are so many kinds of discharge. So the discharge word is a very common, uh, is a word used for very common expressions, a number of expressions. But partial breakdown is more appropriate word for you can say corona. Hmm. Corona is a luminous discharge due to ionization of the air surrounding on electrode caused by a voltage gradient exceeding a certain critical value. It is not just ionization, it is also the local breakdown in the uh, in the dielectric at the surrounding of an electrode because the breakdown or the uh, electric field intensity exists only in the dielectric but at the tip of the electrode so uh, uh, we are also uh, uh, learn what is corona as a term in the Greek uh, language as a, as a uh, crown. Corona is also like a crown and uh, it looks like you, you may not be able to see the luminous discharge as it is written here in the broad, uh, bright light of the day. But you may be able to see in the night or within a lab when you darken the lab, then you can see this activity. In fact, uh, you can. There are three levels of corona. The first level, the voltage at which you can detect it or measure it with the circuitry, electrical circuitry. There are uh, partial breakdown. Uh, uh, detectors, uh, apparatus are available in the labs. The second thing is that you may be able to hear the hissing sound or flutter sound depending upon what type of corona is taking place. And the third thing, when you increase the voltage further, that means at higher intensity of corona, you can see, you can watch in dark the corona. When you see the corona, it looks like, a, in some case, like a star in the sky. So I wish I would have been able to show you that, but uh, if you are uh, having a high voltage lab nearby, ask your instructor to show it to you. These discharges generate light, as I mentioned, audible noise and radio noise. Another thing, radio noise, that means radio interference, electromagnetic interference, EMI we call it also. And there is an energy loss among other things in the corona activity or in the partial breakdown activity always will be there. We can distinguish 
between three types of corona. And the three types of corona uh, termed here are star corona, strema corona, and leader corona. Star corona, as I said, it would look like, uh, like a star in the st sky. Strema corona would uh, look like a shower of discharge or shower of breakdown like a water shower. It will look like the electrical shower of discharge. And the leader corona is uh, something very, very strong, luminous lights. What actually you see, the lightning is, is you can say, is leader breakdown or leader discharge. Yeah, let's study first the development of star corona. And uh, for that, we can, we can investigate the process in um, positive or anode star corona. The, we take see, the partial breakdown activity takes place only in the extremely non-uniform field configuration that we have learned. So a needle plane is a typical electrode system in which uh, uh, depicts an extremely non-uniform field configuration. Because need, the sharper is the electrode, smaller is the radius of curvature of the electrode, mm, higher will be the field intensity there and more of non-uniformity will be there. We have learned that. So the process through which an avalanche is formed at a positive point electrode is analogous to the one formed in uniform field. We have learned how when there is an uh, availability of an uh, initiatory electron, the, you apply the field, the electron gets kinetic energy, potential energy, and it makes some further ionization and the ionization because of the impact, what, uh, because of the velocity that is impact ionization takes place and that develops in the form of an avalanche as we have learned. However, the applied field intensity E in the case of electrode system falls sharply close to the point electrode. I mean, unlike when you take a rod electrode, the field intensity in the gas would not fall away from the tip so rapidly as in the case of point electrode or needle electrode also we call it to be. And beyond, uh, as, as you see in this uh, uh, diagram below here, the this is a point electrode. This is a point electrode, and at the tip of the this is given a, a DC positive polarity, and the plane electrode is grounded here. Uh, uh, that mean, that means you can say it is negative, and when you apply a voltage uh, at the tip of the electrode, the there is the field intensity, the uh, uh, full line, uh, this, this line is giving you the actual field intensity uh, variation in the dielectric between the electrodes, that is the pointer, needle electrode and the plane electrode. This is the variation. But what happens when you apply a positive potential there? The field, they will uh, be, uh, you, you see the shape of the avalanche, shape of the avalanche which begins at the uh, electron, by the electron. So the head of the electron, uh, of the avalanche would be at the tip of the electrode. And at the head, you, we know in an avalanche, the um, electrons are concentrated at the head. So 
negative electrons at the head of the electrode would be absorbed quickly by the positive polarity of the electrode. So what is left behind is nothing but the charge or space charge formed by the ions, that is the positive space charge would be formed at the back. And as, as you see, this positive space charge, this has been enlarged, the whole thing has been enlarged here. Hmm. The whole thing has been enlarged here. As you see, the negative electrons would be absorbed immediately by the, uh, by the electrode and the positive space charge would be built when, when partial breakdown activity is increased there or when the formation of avalanches is there and incre you increase the voltage, actual local breakdown will start taking place and positive space charge just at the tip of the electrode would build up. We have also learned when there are uh, like polarity charges, the field intensity reduces drastically. So the resultant field intensity uh, uh, would be uh, reduced resultant E this is the resultant field intensity here we would be lower than the applied field intensity. So what will happen? This uh, 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 you will have to increase the voltage or the uh, when the uh, positive space charge uh, uh, disperses in the air the field intensity would build up more and this process will keep on going. So, so I mean two electric field intensities without and with space charge are plotted here. Without and with space charge are plotted here. So there is a space charge effect in the resultant field intensity at the tip of the electrode and when you increase the voltage the uh, uh, breakdown uh, partial breakdown will start building up there but the partial breakdown will be slightly you can say away from the tip of the electrode because where the field intensity is able to build up again you can say and then what happens uh, that the required e e uh, this is the uh, this is the field intensity required for ionization and this is the pb inception field intensity so the partial breakdown activity will continue in the depth so long you have the resultant field intensity capital E small i greater than uh, the resultant field intensity is greater than E small i. So in that depth only the partial breakdown activity will be able to take place. Not beyond in the gap in the in the dielectric. So that is what you what we learned here is that the partial breakdown activity will confine to a very small depth in the dielectric, very close to the needle electrode and that depth has been depicted here with delta x as you can see here. Yeah, a positive space charge due to the heavy and slow ions remains at the back. It has a very slow movement, especially because of rapidly decreasing applied field at the tip of the electrode. As you can see, the, at the tip of the electrode, because of the sharpness of the electrode, the field intensity 
is rapidly decreasing in the dielectric in the uh, in the depth of the dielectric this results in weakening of the resultant electric field in the region and the space charge activity it results in weakening of the electric field in the region in front of the tip due to like polarity space charge and at the positive electrode as shown by this figure inception of further partial breakdown is possible only when there is a drift of a space charge away from the anode that means the the positive space charge it has a tendency to disperse diffuse and take space in the dielectric due to radial diffusion which reestablishes the applied electric field because the potential is continuously being applied so there is a kind of a sh um, movement of charge and kind of a um, variation in the activity of the field and that is how this is a, a variable process that is when the breakdown actually occurs at the tip of the electrode there is breakdown is always accompanied with high current so there is current waves produced and they are uh, and the uh, higher is the voltage the whole process would take smaller time to repeat and every time it repeats there is a uh, breakdown which in injects current pulses in the dielectric and that is nothing but the electromagnetic interference emi and you can uh, measure this electromagnetic interference also emi can be measured and this type of a discontinuous process gives rise to an impulse form of discharge current that is the breakdown as i mentioned at voltages just above the inception of partial breakdown i mean you have to have certain magnitude of the voltage depending upon sharpness of the electrode and the gap distance and everything and the type of voltage also uh, above which this activity would be able to take place uh, in so and this impulse form of discharge current will be there in spite of applying a dc voltage to the electrode and the same process is depicted here in case of negative voltage being applied to the tip of the electrode that is negative polarity dc voltage being applied what is the difference between when you have positive polarity and the negative polarity uh, electrode system in the negative polarity electrode the direction of the built up of the avalanche would just reverse as you can see it here because the avalanche begins with an electron and uh, in an uh, uh, avalanche the electron is at the uh, it begins with the electron and takes the shape of an avalanche where the positive polarity are at the tail and the negative uh, electron forms the head of the avalanche so it has reversed the uh, direction in both these figures as you can see the space charge uh, the electric field density where without and with the uh, space charge is being plotted what happens in case of negative polarity because at the tail of the avalanche the positive space charge builds up mind it this is not just we are an analyzing we are trying to show with one single avalanche but there are millions of avalanches taking place there that actually gives rise to the space charge so in the negative polarity electrode the positive polarity space charge would be uh, formed at the tip of the electrode now when the opposite polarity 
come together. That is the negative polarity of the electrode and the positive polarity of the space charge. The resultant field intensity is increased, is higher. And that is what you see here, the actual with, with, with the uh, space charge effect, the electric field intensity increases there. Obviously, when there is higher electric field intensity, there will be more of partial breakdown activity there because the whole process of uh, partial breakdown or any breakdown depends upon the intensity of the field existing in the dielectric. So, in this case, negative uh, corona or you can say star corona, we, we call this to be star, star corona, we see that. Because when you darken the lab, this looks like a star because the whole partial breakdown activity is taking place only near the tip of the electrode and it really looks like a star. So uh, uh, as you, you can see and then further the field intensity goes down because of the positive polarity. Uh, uh, sorry, the negative negative space charge being formed here. You can see it here at the at the head of the avalanche. Negative uh, electrons are there. The negative space charge may not be very highly concentrated because the electrons are very fast, but it will be there and it will remain there for some time and then it also diffuses. But the negative polarity will be there. Now negative negative polarity results in weakening of the electric field as you can see it here weakening of the electric field the resultant electric field takes place in this case so this is a uh, process it uh, the space charge builds up they affect the uh, resultant field intensity partial breakdown takes place the diffusion takes place space charges diffuse in the dielectric and again they built up and so this is a, a uh, continuous discontinuous process it conti which takes place continuously a discontinuous process takes place continuously over the time yeah yeah negative uh, needle plane electrode configuration the cathode uh, we it was also uh, described as glow corona but more appropriate uh, nomenclature would be star corona for this whether it is at taking place at positive or negative uh, needle electrode more appropriate um, expression uh, is star corona but because it looks like a star and I have explained whatever is written here when a negative DC voltage just sufficient for the inception of partial breakdown is applied uh, on a point electrode, the cathode, the condition is similar to the one discussed in the previous slide. And I have explained how does the space charges positive and the negative space charges built up and how do they affect the uh, total uh, field configuration in the gap and the, you can imagine the uh, delta uh, x the maximum length uh, in which uh, the ionization is able to take place that means which is above the field intensity E capital I only then the ionization will be able to take place is very small in the case of negative polarity it is slightly bigger in the case of positive polarity and the breakdown process we will see the uh, photograph are completely different this has been analyzed by scientists over decades and then come to this conclusion uh, yeah here the role of oxygen also comes into picture that since oxygen is uh, oxygen in the air is an electronegative gas. Actually, oxygen is a weakly 
electronegative gas. That means the oxygen also absorbs the free electrons. The slow electrons in front of the avalanche are absorbed by oxygen molecules forming negative ions. Again, because of these heavy and slow ions, negative space charge is also built up in this case, uh, 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 which is developed leading to weakening of the field at a uh, short distance away from the negative point electrode. Negative, negative and negative space charge is built up little away from the uh, needle negative electrode. Preventing the avalanche, uh, hence the partial breakout process from developing further in the cap. That means it confines more close to the electrode. In the meantime, the positive space charge left behind shifts towards the negative point electrode, increasing the field intensity there, positive, positive, increasing the field intensity there and uh, it has been explained there, okay. After a certain time, even the negative space charge shifts away from the vicinity of, uh, vicinity of point electrode or needle electrode, diminishing the field weakening uh, effect. New avalanche and partial breakdown process are then possible. Under the influence of the positive and negative space charge charges, a less non-uniform field is resulted away from the uh, gap, from the gap, away from the gap, leading to higher breakdown voltage. That means, in the case of negative. Uh, a ne negative polarity applied to the needle electrode because of this space charge effect, because uh, of the, uh, the uh, less unif uh, non uniform field is resulted away from the gap, leading to a higher breakdown voltage. It results in higher breakdown voltage as compared to the positive polarity applied to the electrode or the needle electrode. Yeah, the people recorded this here. Yeah. The field uh, intensity distribution. No, this is no, not a field intensity distribution. This, this is known as uh, tritial pulse. Or at the ne this is wrong here. Sorry, this is wrong here. This is uh, this is uh, uh, triple. Uh, sorry, uh, tritial pulse. Tritial is written like this. Tritial pulse measured at uh, at negative uh, needle. When the breakdown or the partial breakdown takes place, uh, applying negative polarity uh, to the needle electrode, this kind of current pulses, as you can see, this is the current magnitude in micro amperes, and this is the time required uh, in the process of repetition of the pulse. This kind of pulses are produced, and this is known very typically, it was measured for uh, negative polarity. Uh, or, or you can say uh, negative uh, or the cathode uh, star corona by the scientist Trishil. So these uh, pulses we did measure in our lab. Yeah, so this is this was what we described to be the star corona. Now. The second type, as I mentioned, of corona is streamer corona. 
mind it when we talked about the star corona the depth in which the star corona takes place the or we go further down further down yeah the depth delta x uh, in which it is able to take place that is this is the uh, further down we go yeah delta x as we can see here in uh, the, these this is the expanded form of the delta x the delta x is so small in star corona that the avalanches are unable to acquire large size large size means the total number of uh, charged particles in the uh, electron in the avalanche is smaller than 10 to the power of 8 that means the avalanches uh, with which this breakdown takes place are of below critical amplification that means the total number of charged particle is less than 10 to the power of 8 so the star corona because of the sharpness of the tip of the electrode always takes place with below critical amplification of the avalanche you, we have learned what it is hmm? the critical amplification and the above critical amplification now what happens is if you changed the shape of the electrode that means you instead of taking a needle electrode you take a hemispherical uh, rod i mean a rod which is given hemispherical shape or you take a small sphere and then apply the voltage the delta x what we just now discussed would be longer in the gap that means the uh, depth of the dielectric in which uh, the field intensity above ionization field intensity and above the uh, partial breakdown field intensity exists will be longer delta x will be longer when the longer uh, delta x is there when in in a longer distance the avalanches are able to build the avalanches would acquire bigger shape that means more number of charged particles in the in an avalanche and they will be able to acquire a shape above critical amplification so uh, what happens that uh, positive let's consider once again positive rod plane electrode in this case with a considering a hemispherical rod hmm? consider a situation after the inception of an avalanche in the uh, region next to the positive rod electrode when the avalanche has grown in it to its critical amplification level because the depth in which the field required field intensity uh, remains will be uh, longer the depth delta x will be longer the following equation must hold good that means uh, in uh, alpha dx uh, integration of alpha dx from 0 to xc xc is the critical depth is equal to ln n uh, nxc by n not which is equal to uh, 18.4 18. for critical amplification when we knew that the total number of charged particle is more than 10 to the power of 8 and this 18.4 has been uh, for convenience sake to be able to remember in general has been considered to be 20 you can say where x is the length of an avalanche when it acquires its critical amplification electrons at the head of the avalanche are absorbed 
immediately by the positive rod electrode as in the case of star corona. The positive space charge left behind can lead to a weakening of the field next to the anode to such an extent that further discharges may not be possible in this region. Since the avalanche has acquired its critical amplification, there is a strong concentration of positive space charge till up to the tail and uh, tail end of the avalanche. That is what he has received here. Now we have not taken here a, a needle electrode, we have taken a rod electrode. And then uh, uh, first the, the weakening of the uh, field intensity takes place because of the two like polarity charges, positive, positive. And then the negative uh, space charge is built up because of the negative and the positive applied to the electrode there is an enhancement. This is because of the negative space charge. So you will see that this enhancement which develops in the depth, enhancement of the field intensity in pockets develops deeper into the uh, dielectric between the two electrodes, deeper in the depth of the dielectric. We have number of uh, enhancement diminishing one after the other. So the, what happens the field intensity required for uh, we have the uh, depth of the uh, depth of the dielectric in which field intensity above EI that is the partial discharge or partial breakdown inception field intensity is available longer for longer depth in the uh, gap. So this is again uh, on the uh, field intensity plotted for without and with, the, with space charges and with the space charge consideration the you have enhanced field intensity within the depth of the uh, long, longer in the depth of the dialect. So the partial breakdown activity extends itself. In this case, when you have positive electrode applied here, the positive, the uh, uh, partial breakdown activity extends itself in the gap. And this is an estimation that what is the uh, potential gradient across these channels. And this has been estimated by measurements to be something around 4.5 to 5 kb per centimeter as you see here 4.5 to 5 kb per centimeter uh, when the potential gradient in the breakdown channels is available to this tune around 5 kb per centimeter the uh, partial breakdown activity keeps on taking place in the depth so long it is available I and mean, this field intensity is available. So this is the uh, potential gradient uh, required by, you can say, this is the potential gradient required in the dielectric for the stream of corona to be able to extend itself. And the whole process is not just at one point of the electrode, several points of the electrode and the whole breakdown process in the dielectric looks like a shower of breakdown, shower of discharge, like a water shower it looks like to me. Several uh, discharge process or the streamers are available. This is a typical photograph of positive streamer discharge taken by Lemke, a very well known scientist from TV Dresden in Germany. This photograph was taken by Lemke on applying a long duration that is 1 by 5000 microsecond impulse wave shape of 100 kV 
positive peak voltage, impulse voltage on a needle plane electrode. Needle had some diameter, I mean some radius not that sharp radius, but higher radius. Electrode system having a gap distance of 20 centimeter. Similar photographs have also been taken by other authors and even on dielectrics other than gaseous dielectrics. This similar process also takes place in, uh, for example, in uh, solid dielectrics. Similar kind of discharge takes place. So there is a similarity that is what we will come next. Whatever we are learning in gaseous dielectrics, most of the work, as I said, in air has been performed. But similar characteristic of the breakdown process development has been also observed in case of solids and liquids. So there is an analogy between them. A number of partial breakdown branches grow exponentially with increasing gap uh, length. And this looks like a star in the, uh, so sorry, this looks like a shower uh, in the dark. When you can see it in the darkened lab, this kind of a shower of breakdown or shower of discharge coming out of the electrode. Yeah, negative rod plane electrode, the same as we analyzed in case of uh, mm -hmm. needle plane electrode, rod plane electrode also. The negative, uh, negative, when we apply negative voltage to the rod, it has been analyzed here. We can quickly read, uh, it's the same process actually develops, but in a, mm, shape with in a form the whole breakdown process takes place in this case when we change the shape of the electrode from needle to rod uh, the uh, depth in which the process is able to develop becomes more and the breakdown or discharge process takes place with above critical amplification of avalanche. As with positive rod plane electrodes, the development of stream of discharge in negative rods also begin with an avalanche of above critical amplification. Obviously, the direction of the avalanche would be reversed in this case, as in the case of positive rod. The negative Streamer mechanisms is in principle comparable to the positive streamer except for the location of the formation of space charge as it was different it has been explained in case of uh, needle electrode. The direction of the avalanches in this case is however opposite that is their heads are away from the rod. Uh, a strong positive, positive space charge is therefore built in front of the rod that is at the tail of the avalanche in the dielectric. Increasing the field intensity right at the tip of the electrode. The negative rod and the positive space charge in the opposite polarity in increase the uh, resultant field intensity. Electrons from a negative space charge of their uh, own and that of negative oxygen ions at the head of the avalanche slightly away from the tip of the electrode. The two like polarity charges weaken the field intensity away from the electrode. Higher basic field is required. Obviously, when you take a, uh, an 
electrode of the shape rod, unlike in the shape maybe, you need higher voltage to be applied. In this situation, to enable the uh, impact and photo ionizations as well as PB in uh, to partial breakdown to continue farther away from the gap. Just I'll show you uh, uh, two more slides. When the PB process develops farther away from the uh, from the electrode, scattering of negative space charge takes place by radial diffusion because of the high mobility of electrons. Consequently, weakening of the negative space charge takes place. The field intensity which is affected by the concentration of space charge again increases to some extent. Because of this space charge effect on the field, the anode directed streamer corona is not able to grow. Anode directed, that means when negative polarity voltage is applied to the electrode, that is um, the streamer is developing towards the anode. The anode directed uh, um, is not able to grow in the gap uh, to the extent compared to cathode directed corona at the same potential. The radial diffusion of electrons is also responsible for comparatively lesser number of distinct trajectories of a streamer able to develop at the rod. So here you see the positive polarity and the negative polarity uh, streamer develop at the tip of a rod electrode. These are known as Lichtenberg figures. Uh, for the first time documented by the scientist Lichtenberg in uh, the uh, by these photographs were taken by Turpler of uh, TU Dresden in Germany. The above one is the positive polarity streamer corona which extends more in the gap as explained whereas the negative polarity streamer corona confines more concentrated near the near the tip of the electrode. These are two typical uh, figures and you know how stream of corona extends with the polarity. So we close for today. We'll then see more in next lecture. Thank you very much.